Deserts are paradoxes of nature, seemingly barren yet surprisingly alive, unforgiving yet fragile. The Sahara Desert, the world's largest hot desert, spans North Africa like a tan mantle. Daytime temperatures here can soar to 50 degree, 122 degree, enough to fry the moisture out of any exposed life. At night, without clouds to trap heat, the mercury plummets, dipping below freezing in some areas. Blistering days, frigid nights, the desert swings between extremes that would kill the unprepared. Rain is scant and unpredictable. Months or even years can pass without a drop. When rain does fall, it often comes as a sudden downpour that the sun-baked earth cannot absorb, leading to brief flash floods that vanish as quickly as they arrive. Yet life endures. To find it, one must look closely and often at the fringes of day. As the intense afternoon heat gives way to dusk, the desert begins to stir. Tiny paw prints appear on a dune slip face, evidence of a fennec fox that had been waiting out the day in the cool of an underground burrow. Fennec foxes are the desert's adorable miniatures, small, sand-colored with enormous ears that serve as radiators to dissipate heat. Under the light of the emerging stars, the fennec fox becomes active, trotting across the sand in search of beetles, lizards, or any edible morsel. Its ears are so sensitive it can hear insects crawling under the sand. With a swift pounce and dig, it unearths a darkling beetle, crunching the prey and deriving not just nourishment but precious moisture from its body fluids. Many desert creatures get moisture from their food and may never drink free water at all. Across a gravel plain, a lone dromedary camel plods steadily, guided by a Touareg herder in indigo robes. The camel is the ultimate desert survivor, often dubbed the ship of the desert. It's easy to see why. Camels can travel long distances in searing heat carrying heavy loads, with infrequent stops for water. Their humps store fat, not water as commonly believed, which can be metabolized for energy and hydration. They can lose over 25% of their body water, a level that would be fatal for most mammals, and still soldier on. This camel hasn't had a drink in a week, yet it shows no distress. As it walks, Specialized oval-shaped pads on its feet prevent it from sinking into soft sand. The herder and camel are part of an ancient partnership. At dusk they find a solitary acacia tree, under which they'll camp for the night. The camel nibbles on the acacia's thorny branches nonchalantly. Its tough mouth and tongue handle thorns with ease, and the sparse leaves provide a bit of nutrition. The acacia tree itself is a beacon of life. Its deep roots tap into hidden groundwater. Beneath it, the sand is noticeably cooler and moister. Here, a desert hedgehog has dug out a burrow among the tree's roots and emerges to hunt insects. Overhead, as twilight deepens, bats flutter out from rocky crevices to snatch moths attracted by the tree's tiny blooms. The acacia's presence creates a microhabitat. Shade, slightly more humidity, and bits of plant litter that feed insects, which in turn feed larger animals. It's a reminder that even a single tree can be critical in the desert's web of life. We travel now to a vast dune field, the Erg, where the classic huge dunes shift with the wind. Up close, the sand is constantly in motion, grains dancing in skittering sheets across the surface when the afternoon wind, the Ghibli, or Harmattan, blows. This wind can be both sculptor and destroyer. It shapes dunes into crescents, stars, pyramids. Every dune a different testament to wind direction and sand supply. But the wind also brings sandstorms, which can rise suddenly and turn day into orange darkness. In a severe sandstorm, sand and dust fill the air, scouring exposed skin and clogging lungs. Wise desert travelers seek shelter at the first sign of distant dust devils growing in size. Many desert animals have evolved ways to cope with sand and wind. The tiny Sahara sand viper, for instance, will bury itself just under the surface. Only its eyes and upturned snout exposed, waiting out the storm, and ambushing any small rodent or lizard that might pass by its hidden coil. Horned lizards and geckos simply let themselves be partially buried by blowing sand, their nostrils and eyelids adapted to keep particles out. The jerboa, a hopping desert rodent with kangaroo-like legs, escapes by leaping into an existing rodent burrow or quickly digging a shallow pit and covering itself. Night falls fully, and the stars in the desert are like diamonds on black velvet. 
undimmed by humidity or city lights. Under this celestial canopy, the desert truly comes alive. A cape hair ventures out, large ears erect, similar function to the phoenix, for heat dissipation and keen hearing. It nibbles on a crust of dried plants that sprouted briefly after a last rain. These plants are masters of opportunism. Many are ephemerals that live fast and die soon. When a rare rain showers the dunes, within days the desert floor erupts in a thin blush of green. Seeds that have lain dormant spring to life. They must grow, flower, and seed in a matter of weeks or even days before the moisture vanishes again. We recall witnessing this miracle in a previous season, a stretch of empty gravel transformed into a carpet of yellow tribulus blooms and purple morning glories, dotted with buzzing bees. But now, months later, only the brittle remnants of those plants remain, their seeds safely buried and waiting for the next rainfall, even if it comes years later. Our hair suddenly freezes, its ears pick up a soft padding sound, it bolts, but a desert fox, Ripple's fox, bursts from behind a bush, giving chase. In the moonlight, we see flashes of the pursuit, the hair zigzagging, the fox close behind. A cloud passes over the moon. In the darkness, we hear only a thump and a brief squeal. When the moonlight returns, the fox has the hair in its jaws. This small fox with a sand-colored coat and black-tipped tail has kittens waiting in a den nearby. Tonight, they will eat well. Life in the desert is harsh, and every successful hunt is hard won. Just before dawn, the temperature has plummeted. A thin frost might even glisten on some rocks. Astonishing, perhaps, but real. The dry air allows heat to radiate away at night, chilling surfaces. As the horizon glow announces sunrise, we find a desert amphibian emerging. Against all expectations, yes, amphibians exist here. The Sahara Desert Toad spends most of the year buried deep in a state of estivation a kind of hibernation for heat and drought. Only when a good rain occurs does it dig out, find ephemeral pools, and breed frantically. But even without surface water, some individual toads venture out on humid nights to feed on insects. How do they survive the dryness? By absorbing moisture from damp sand and burrows and sealing themselves with a cocoon of shed skin layers to prevent water loss during their long sleep underground. Now as the sun peaks, this toad retreats to its burrow to wait for the next rare rain. With sunrise, the cycle begins anew. Desert plants have already started their day's work. Many sport silvery or hairy leaves to reflect sunlight and reduce water loss. We walk by a scrub of salt bush and notice its leaves glistening. It excretes excess salt to survive in saline soil, the crystals shining in the early light. Nearby, a cluster of cacti in New World deserts, or euphorbias, cactus lookalikes in African deserts, stand plump and ready. Their pleated surfaces allow them to expand after a rain, storing water like living barrels. Spines protect them from thirsty animals and provide shade by casting tiny shadows on the cactus surface. We crouch near a dune beetle making its way up a sand ridge. This little insect has perhaps one of the most inventive water-gathering techniques. In the Namib Desert, in coastal southwest Africa, Darkling beetles climb dunes at dawn and do headstands, raising their abdomens. Their bumpy backs catch faint fog blowing in from the Atlantic. Droplets condense and run down to their mouths. In the Sahara, where fog is rare, a similar beetle might wait for dew or simply derive moisture from the plants it eats and metabolic water. Nothing goes to waste. Even the beetle's own feces are reconsumed to extract every bit of moisture. A pair of Arabian oryx comes into view on the horizon, their long, straight horns almost too perfect, like unicorns. These antelopes were once extinct in the wild, but reintroduction efforts have brought them back to some deserts. They are marvels of desert adaptation, able to let their body temperature rise safely to avoid sweating and wasting water, and able to smell distant rain and travel toward it. An oryx can go weeks or months without drinking, getting moisture from the grasses and roots it digs up at night. We watch them use their shovel-like hooves to scrape at the sand, uncovering tubers to eat. Conservation success stories like the Oryx remind us that while the desert is tough, it is also fragile. These ecosystems recover slowly from disturbance, and the loss of a species can tip the balance, perhaps more so than in lusher environments. Midday approaches again, and the cycle of life recedes into shelter to avoid the sun's harshest glare. As we prepare to leave the desert, a final spectacle awaits. A dust devil, 
a mini tornado of sand, whirls across the plain, stirring up a column of golden grains that dance toward the sky. It is as if the desert is waving goodbye in its own energetic way. In this journey, we've seen that the desert, though austere, is anything but lifeless. Its creatures and plants embody ingenuity and resilience. From the fox that hunts by night, to the camel that endures thirst, to the seeds that sleep for years awaiting rain. Each has carved out a niche in a land where generosity is measured in drops of water and degrees of shade. The desert's beauty lies in its simplicity and extremes. The endless dunes, the open sky, the silence that can suddenly bloom with life. It teaches us about the preciousness of water, the value of adaptation, and the delicate balance that allows life to persist in the harshest of domains. As the sun once again blazes overhead, we carry with us immense respect for the survivors of the sands, those that make the desert their home, against all odds and a true testament to the tenacity of life.